Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to a Mod Spotlight. Today, taking a look at Building Gadgets 2. Uh, I've already done a small Mod Spotlight on Building Gadgets 2, but I've added a lot of features since then, including a bunch of really cool special effects that I'm excited to show you guys. Uh, so I figured let's do a whole new Mod Spotlight on Building Gadgets 2 so that uh, folks who are new to the mod might understand it a little bit better. Uh, and folks who've seen it before, there's a bunch of cool stuff for you to see that's new. So if you haven't been following along with the development over the last month or two, it's worth checking out this video because there is a I'm really proud of some of like the, uh, the, the, the eye candy that I put into this thing. Like there are some cool special effects, I think. You're gonna have to let me know what you think. And I'd really like to hear in the comments of the video what your favorite special effect is. Cause there's like six or seven of them now. <laughs> and it's getting actually a little ridiculous. I need to stop. I am having a problem adding new animations to the building of my mod. So let's start checking out Building Gadgets 2, all the things you can do with it. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's do it. So Building Gadgets 2 is a mod that's about making building easier. Now, the first thing is there is a Gadgets for Derps book that you can check out uh, to figure out all the nuances of gadgets. So if you're, you know, in the, in the game and you want to figure out how things work, you can see some nuances of how different mechanics within Building Gadgets work by taking a look at this book. Feel free to guide through it uh, as, as you like. Uh, We'll start off with the building gadget because that's the most basic one. Uh, now, in order to build with the building gadget, you're going to need some form of power. You can charge up with any mod that supports Forge Energy. Uh, you can use the charging station from charging gadgets, or you can use the energy cube from mechanism, whatever you want to fill that thing up with power. Uh, and then step two is simply choosing the block that you want to build with. And you do that uh, by shift clicking on the block with the gadget. You'll notice right now it says that the block is set to air. If I shift click on that thing, it will change it to stone bricks and it will be ready to build. Um, holding the settings menu key, you can uh, open up the settings menu here and you can see a bunch of different building forms. So you can do what's built called build to me. It'll build a bunch of blocks towards the player. Uh, and there's some other ones that we'll check out in a minute. There's also some settings out here on the side that we'll talk about in just a few minutes as well. And uh, there's a bunch of different things you can do with it. So let's start off by building. And in order to do that, you simply right click. Now in order to build, you need to have the appropriate items in your inventory. Uh, if you don't have the appropriate items, you'll see there's a red overlay indicating that you don't have what you need. However, simply get what you need and you'll have no problem. The overlay will disappear and it will happily build for you and right click to build. Very cool. You'll notice that uh, blocks build in an iterative kind of pattern. They don't build all at once anymore. Uh, so when you're building, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit better and friendlier on frame rates. And also I think it looks a little bit cooler. Now, once you've built what you want to build, you can uh, press the undo hotkey if you made a mistake, or you can just open up the settings menu and click undo here, and it will remove uh, whatever blocks were most recently placed. Undo remembers the last 10 things that you built. So if you build a bunch of stuff, you can undo up to 10 times. You'll notice it's taking blocks out of my inventory every time it builds, and it's returning them to me every time I undo. Switching around building modes is easy and there's a bunch of different ones. Vertical wall will build a wall of blocks uh, upwards. So you'll notice here that as I make this bigger, it'll build, for example, a seven by seven of blocks. And as usual, you can undo. Uh, there's vertical columns that'll just build, you know, seven blocks up and you can adjust the range as high as 15. Uh, there's a bunch of different modes here, horizontal wall, surface mode, all kinds of other stuff that we'll talk about a little bit more in depth in a moment. If you switch into creative mode, it won't require energy or blocks to place anything. So you can build with whatever you want. For example, even if you don't have grass, you can go ahead and place it because you're in creative mode. Um, let's talk about surface mode because it's a little bit different than some of the other ones here and you can kind of play with them. And as you, uh, as you experiment with the different modes, you'll be able to figure out how different things work. Um, so for example, you know, if we looked at horizontal wall here, you'll notice that it'll build a wall off of the block face that you're looking at. However, if you're looking at the top of a block face, it'll build around it. Horizontal wall also supports the place on top feature, which will, instead of placing blocks, um, you know, around the block you're looking at, it'll build a wall on top of the block you're looking at. Other modes might have a place on top as well. For example, grid mode does. Where if you turn off place on top, it'll build a grid around the blocks that you've looked at. So 
Surface mode's a little bit different. Uh, if you turn on surface mode, you'll notice that it places kind of along whatever block face you're looking at. So if you look at the bottom of a block, it'll place along the bottom. If you look at the top of the blocks, it'll place on top. By default, it will only expand on blocks that match the one you're looking at. So for example, you'll see I'm looking at the dirt here and it's only building on top of the dirt. It's, if I look at the grass here, it'll only build on top of the grass. However, if I turn on fuzzy mode, it doesn't matter anymore and it'll build along whatever. And this one also has a range add-on so you can bump the range up a little bit. Now I promised you guys some eye candy, so let's take a look. Uh, down here on the bottom left is how you change the animation that will happen when blocks are built. Uh, so simply click on that and there's a bunch of different ones we can cycle through. Uh, fade will cause the blocks to fade into existence rather than growing up like we saw just a moment ago. Looks pretty cool, I think. Uh, and we'll also add on some furnaces here because you can also build with tile entities or block entities if you wish. And if we did a, a friendly little build to me, you'll see what that kind of looks like. Not too shabby. Uh, the next one up is Squish, which uh, if you're building with something like stone, you're not going to notice the difference between the next three that I'm going to show you. But with blocks like uh, the, the furnace, you will. Uh, so let's do, a, uh, let's do a horizontal row for this one. Um, yeah, that might be cool. Now yeah, let's do surface mode actually with fuzzy off. So that is the squish mode. The grow up mode, kind of like squish, but obviously a little bit different. And finally the rise up mode. And this last one I'm very quite proud of because uh, it's one I just added. It's called the snap. Uh, fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe might recognize where I got the inspiration for this. Uh, you can also build with the snap as well, and it'll kind of reverse that animation. Sometimes you want to get a look at how things are going to appear without you know, having to look in the same position all the time. Luckily, there's an anchor, which you can also set to a hotkey. When you do that, it'll always lock the blocks in place as they currently are, and then you can right-click anywhere to place them. You notice the anchor is removed as soon as you build with it. So simply set the anchor, and it'll stick. Now, not everybody carries a ton of uh, building materials with them all the time. So let's switch back into survival mode and show you how you can bind your gadgets to an inventory like a chest or basically any inventory, really. Uh, and let's see what happens. Uh, so simply turn on bind mode by clicking on it in here. You'll notice it turns green when bind mode is active. You'll notice right now I can't build with any bricks because I don't have any in my inventory. Shift right click on the chest and it will bind. You'll notice it says bind successful. You can also see on the tooltip where it's bound to. Currently it's bound to the overworld at those coordinates and a blue outline appears around the inventory whenever you have the gadget in your hand. You can bind each gadget to their own inventory so other gadgets can be bound to other inventories. Uh, now you'll notice that you can build with the bricks that are in the inventory. So right now we've got 63 bricks in there. If we go build a bunch, you'll notice that it took those bricks out of the chest for us and we can undo and the items go back into the chest. Pretty cool. One thing to note, however, is because of the way Minecraft works, um, there's no good way to check all the inventory contents. So we lose the red overlay here. So we don't have a red overlay, even though we don't have any grass or stone. That's unfortunate, but it's just kind of the way it is. So for now, you're just going to have to, you know, figure out if you can build or not. And for those of you who find chests too small, you'll note that you can also bind to an applied energistic system. You do need to have a wireless access point. If you use applied energistics before, you should know how this thing works. Uh, simply add your gadget here, or if you want to, you can even uh, go ahead and enable bind mode and shift right click on the wireless access point itself. It shouldn't matter. And you'll notice now that the gadget is bound to the wireless access point. Now, any building that we do, for example, if we want to build with oak logs, we can do that. Uh, any building we do should be removed from the Applied Energistic system, and undoing that build will also return the items back to the Applied Energistic system. 
All gadgets can be bound to chess or applied energistics, including the copy paste and the exchange gadgets. So once we get to looking at those, we won't cover those features because it's the exact same thing. It should be noted, by the way, that if you want to remove the bind that you have, uh, it's as easy as setting up bind mode and clicking on any block that's not an inventory, like stone or grass, doesn't matter. You'll notice it says bind removed and the blue uh, outline disappears. Uh, now let's talk about ray trace fluids mode. Uh, so ray trace fluids, let's say we wanted to build a vertical column on top of our blocks. You'll notice that right now we're not ray tracing fluids, which means when we build, it's going to build on top of the stone block we're looking at. The thing we're looking at, we're ignoring the liquid. Uh, however, if we want to not ignore liquids, we can do this. And now we can place right on top of water, easy peasy. Pretty cool. Uh, another feature of ray trace fluids modes is the ability to copy a fluid. So for example, if I shift right click with ray trace fluids off, you'll notice I've copied dirt. Uh, however, if I turn on ray trace fluids and shift click, you'll notice that I've now copied water. And we can build using water pretty easily. So let's do a build to me here, and you'll notice that it's placing water in the world. Now I'm currently in creative mode, so that's why it was placing water without having any. Uh, if you're in survival mode, you're gonna need something that has water in it in order for the placing to work. Uh, you can use buckets and it will place however many buckets of water you have. And if you undo, uh, when you undo, it'll look for a place to put the water. If it doesn't find any, it'll avoid it. So if you undo or you uh, exchange water, uh, you'll find that it voids the water if you have no empty buckets in your inventory. Uh, you can also use tanks from some mods. So if a, if a, if a mod has a, a fluid tank, for example, like mechanism, and we go ahead and put a couple buckets of water into there, and then we pick up that tank, uh, we can build using that and it'll take the water out of the tank. So you'll notice the tank is now empty. And if we undo, it'll put the water back in. So that covers most of the features of the building gadget. Again, you can go ahead and flip through the building gadget details here just to get an idea of what can happen. And if you're curious about all the different building modes and how they work, feel free to read through the book. Uh, now let's take a look at the next gadget that we're gonna take a look at, and that is the exchanging gadget. Uh, the exchanging gadget will swap one set of blocks for another. Uh, for example, let's say that you've got some uh, bricks in your inventory and you wanna turn this grass floor into bricks. Easily enough, just right click and it'll swap it out. Boom. And you'll notice that it takes the bricks out of your inventory and gives you dirt back. Uh, however, this may not be the ideal situation for you. You want grass, not dirt. So don't worry, you can enchant this guy with Silk Touch. Go ahead and drop the exchanging gadget into a enchanting table. Silk Touch is pretty much the only enchant it can get. Uh, now, when you go ahead and swap these things out, you'll notice that instead of it giving you back your dirt, it's going to give you the grass. Beautiful. You can also undo, but do note that you need the appropriate items in your inventory to undo. If we try to undo the second set here because we don't have any grass, it's going to fail. So make sure you have the appropriate items before you try to do an undo. You'll also notice that you can undo in mid, mid flow here. So there's no problem doing that. Easy peasy. Undo at any time should work. Many of the features uh, of, of, the, of the gadget are the same. Uh, one cool thing you can do with the exchanging gadget is you can swap out fluids one for another. So if I just wanted to exchange a bunch of fluid here for stone, you can see that, and it gave me all the fluids. So now I got 11 buckets in here, the two from before plus the nine that I just exchanged. And if you want, you can also swap out like so. And you can see that it took those nine fluid uh, blocks, put them in the tank, then removed them from the tank when we placed them in the world like so. Pretty spiffy. By default, the exchanging gadget will not affect tile entities or block entities like chests or anything with an inventory. However, if you want it to do so, simply click the button here. And you'll notice that now it can affect the chest. And I can swap out the chest for a block. And don't worry, you can definitely undo it. So if we were to hit the undo button here, you'll notice it took my chest away and put that chest back. Do note that if there's any contents inside the chest when you exchange it, it'll just fall on the ground. So be aware of that. And just like the connected mode, we, uh, we have fuzzy and connected area just like we did with surface mode before. So by default, when you're looking at a bunch of blocks, let's say for example, we had uh, some stone blocks here and we were trying to convert them into, let's say, dirt. You'll notice that by default, 
it's only going to exchange the stone with the dirt, as we can see right there. It's not going to uh, extend out. So if we do this, it's only matching the stone. However, if we put on fuzzy mode, it'll go ahead and swap any blocks, assuming, of course, it's not already the block you're trying to exchange. And then connected textures mode is a, is a little bit of a nuance, uh, but I think it's, it's useful to understand how it works. So let me get that ready for you guys. What I'm going to do here is swap out another area. And then let's say that we wanted to turn things into dirt. And we bumped this up. So if we turned off fuzzy mode here, and then we turned off connected texture, you'll see what's happening is the the connected area is on right now. So that's only going to exchange these nine blocks because they're all touching each other. These nine over here are not touching these nine, so it won't connect over to it. But if we turn off connected area, it can. Bind inventory, undo, anchor, and then the different effects here are all uh, equivalently available. Not a problem. So feel free to uh, Thanos snap it up. The next gadget to talk about is the destruction gadget, a slightly different UI, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. All it does is void blocks from the world. You will not get the drops from the blocks. It'll just destroy them, uh, but it's nice for clearing out a large terrain all at once. Uh, you can specify the depth, and that's the depth away from which you're looking at the player. And then if you want, you can specify the up down, left, and right directions uh, as much as you want. So I'll go a depth of, let's say, seven here, and to the left, eight, and to the right, eight. You can only max out to a 16 uh, total on the different sides there. So for example, if we do this, it should clear out a pretty large area. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also, of course, change the different animations. So if you want to snap everything out of existence, you're for more than welcome to. And, uh, you know, you can also do the ray trace fluids thing. And then that'll remove fluids versus not. Also, by default, effect block entities is disabled, so you don't accidentally void away all your block entities, but you can turn it on if you wish. Uh, and the anchor mode works the same as well, so you can kind of get a look at what's going to happen before you do it. And then, of course, undo is also available for whenever you make mistakes. The next gadget to talk about is the copy and paste gadget. This allows you to copy and paste an area of the world. And the same thing as before, ray trace fluids um, and uh, bind inventory and anchor and undo are all available here, as well as the different animations. Uh, so to start, right click on one corner of a block and then shift right click on the opposite corner of a structure that you'd like. And you'll notice that a green outline comes around the entire structure showing you what you've copied. So I'm gonna copy this entire house. Uh, if you look at the, uh, let's see here, where is it? If you go into paste mode and look at the materials list here, you'll be able to see the list of all the items uh, that are required and what you have. So for example, I have two chests, but I don't have a crafting table. I've got all 31 dirt that I need. I only have one of the oak planks I need and only 51 of the 223 stone bricks I need. So if I try to build this structure, most of it's not gonna get built, but some of it might. Um, you'll notice that I've got some items in the chest here and also in the furnace. It's not gonna copy those. So let's switch into creative mode just to see what this structure looks like when it's placed. Uh, so simply right click to place it in the world. And again, you can anchor it up if you want. So feel free to set up an anchor there and then place. Pretty cool. Oh no, we built it too high. That's not what I wanted. Let's undo. What you can do is you can change where the paste is occurring. So let's go ahead and put it right here. And then I'm going to go into the settings menu and we can adjust the placement and then hit confirm. You'll notice we moved it down one Y level. Now, if we go inside this room, uh, it's going to go ahead and place. But oh no, I wanted oak floor, not grass floor. That's not ideal. Let's go ahead and undo that again. 
I'm going to go ahead and anchor this guy right back up. And you'll notice it remembers from before uh, what settings we're at. So we're still at Y minus one for the uh, placement adjustment. Now, I don't want a grass floor. I want an oak floor. So I'm going to turn on uh, replace blocks mode, which is unique to both the copy paste and the cut and paste gadget. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to work like a destruction gadget in that it voids whatever items it's overwriting. So make sure that you're careful about that. Um, so the grass floor is going to be voided. We're not going to get the dirt or the grass back. Um, so when we right click this guy now, you'll see that it's exchanging the grass for the oak blocks that we wanted and building the nice house all around me. Pretty spiffy. Some blocks are ignored and notice that it's not copying chest contents because that would be a little bit broken. Uh, but some blocks are ignored in building gadgets, doors because they are cursed and beds because they are cursed. So don't try to copy paste beds or doors. And there's a few other things as well uh, for mod pack makers or modders. If you want to make sure your, your, your blocks are not copied, you'll notice that there is a unique um, building gadgets to deny tag that you can place on your blocks and it'll block building gadgets from being able to interact with it. Note, if you undo a build that didn't exchange, you won't get those original blocks back. So be really careful when you're doing what you want to do there. Now's a good time to talk about the template manager. Uh, so let's say you've built a really beautiful house like this nine by nine I have, and you'd like to save it for later. Simply set up a template manager, drop the copy paste gadget into the top slot and a piece of paper into the bottom spot. When you click save, it will record that information. You now get a preview of the house that you've made. You can left click to rotate around. Uh, you can right click to pan around and look at it. And you can even zoom in with the mouse wheel. So you can get a kind of a nice look at how that house will look in the world uh, before you decide to place it. Uh, easy peasy. Now I've got my template and if I ever lose my gadget or, or, or need a new one, all I have to do is get myself a new gadget here, place the template in here and hit load. And we'll now see that we have the paste available on this gadget as well. Uh, in addition, if you want, you can uh, give it a name and hit save and it will attach the name to the template so you can remember you know which templates are which pretty convenient in addition in this ui you can take a quick look at the inventory items that you need in order to place it and then there's two more buttons we haven't talked about copy and paste what this does is allow you to copy a unique string of characters to your clipboard on your computer and then you can share that with your friends either you know online and something like discord or reddit or wherever you want to paste that information it's just a bunch of characters that go onto your computer's clipboard you know like you copied and pasted any text um, once you do that you'll be able to share it so for example i have a copy paste structure uh, from uh, the direwolf 20 discord and i'm going to go ahead and paste that in here now so somebody else built a really cool house, way fancier than I could ever build, and they shared the uh, unique code for it. So if I click, uh, if I copy that onto my computer's clipboard and then click paste in here, you'll notice that it's got this beautiful house ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and hit load here. And now we can go ahead and put that in the world for ourselves if we wanted to. So I'm just gonna build it up, uh, let's say right here. And now it would be probably a good time to talk about the rotate functionality. You can rotate your structures if you wish. So I'm gonna rotate it, let's say like that, and then anchor this guy down. That looks pretty cool, right? Yeah, I like the looks of this thing. So let's make sure that we are in replace blocks mode. And obviously because we're in creative, we don't actually need the items, but there's a hefty amount of items if you're in survival mode that you'll need to uh, build this with. But let's place it. And the building commences. You'll notice the benefit right now that frames aren't dropping and my FPS is really good, mostly because uh, we're building in that staggered kind of approach. Overall, a very nice structure. Not something I'd ever be able to build, but luckily the copy paste gadget brings me uh, all the help I need. And of course you can undo this as well. And you'll notice as soon as I hit the undo hotkey, it starts undoing all the building. 
So sharing your uh, nifty buildings is really nice and helpful. Um, one more note for the copy paste gadget is when you're copy and pasting, if you want to uh, change the area that you've got and selected. So for example, say you've got like, you know, a nice little flag or something at the top here that you want to include. Uh, simply while you're in copy mode, there's a settings menu here and you can adjust um, the X and Y coordinates of the things that you've copied, no problem. And just like we mentioned, you can do rotate, uh, ray tracing fluids, and uh, binding of inventory as well. So you can bind this to a applied energistic system and then have no problem building large structures. Let's snap undo the last building we built. Goodbye, nine by nine. And the final structure I'd like to show you guys, or the final gadget, is the cut and paste gadget. Works very similar to the copy paste gadget, except it's a one-time operation. It will remove a structure from the world, including all the tile data, and place it back somewhere else. So, for example, I'm simply going to click on one corner and then shift click on an opposite corner. You'll notice that the outline around this building is now red instead of green, indicating that we're about to cut this structure out of the world. Uh, you'll notice I've got a bunch of items inside my you know, chest and everything. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure we're ready to cut it. To do so is pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy in snap mode again, cause that's kind of one of my, it's the newest one I did, so it's my favorite. Uh, and then I'm gonna click cut and it should fade everything out of existence. At this point, we're automatically placed into paste mode because we're ready to paste this into the world. Now you only get one shot at this, uh, so make sure you make it a good one. Now, just like with uh, the, the copy paste, you can go into your settings menu and you can move that thing down one. So that's about where I want this house to be, right? Let's move it from there over to here. Uh, when you're ready to paste, simply hit the right click button and it'll go ahead and build it back up for you. Cool. Uh, you'll notice that it copied across all the block data that we had in there. So chest contents and everything should be copied. Now, fair warning, there are some mods that may not appreciate this. There's not much I can do about that. Um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, just be careful. So it should be fine, though, for the most part. But some mods may get particularly grumpy. Uh, obviously, if you're not in creative mode, let's put ourselves in survival, this will use up a little bit of energy, but it won't interact with items at all. So again, we'll go ahead and uh, do cut. And cut. And you'll notice it's, um, it's, it's, it's not draining energy to do the cut, but it will drain energy to do the paste. So let's make sure that we're anchored here. And let's bring this back up a Y level or so. That should be fine. Cool. And now when we place it in the world, you'll notice it took energy off my gadget to paste it back in. Um, if you don't have enough energy for the entire paste, it won't let you do it. Okay. Uh, in addition, if you... Uh, if you, if you happen to try to cut while you already have another set of blocks on cut. So right now there's that data stored on the gadget, right? We already have a set of blocks in there. If we try to click the, butt, cut, the cut button again, uh, it will tell you the tool already has cut data stored. Click again to overwrite this data. If you do that, it will remove those blocks in the world, but these blocks that we originally cut are now lost forever. Uh, and you'll never get them back so, you know, be, be careful. Cut and paste can do, uh, I would say a pretty large area and so can copy paste for that matter. So feel free to try, you know, the cut and paste structure in a pretty decent sized area. It should be pretty cool and work pretty well. Uh, let's try it over here, for example. Uh, I'm actually gonna bring this guy just a little bit. Yeah, how's that sound? Cool. All right, goodbye world. We hardly knew ye. Hey, not bad, looks pretty good. And then we can just move this mountain face, I don't know, up to here-ish. How's that sound? Cool. And I'm gonna flip this guy into grow mode. Now, obviously, as gravel is being placed in the world, it's going to be affected by gravity. Not much you can do about that, obviously, so be careful with it, but no problem.
So that entire structure was moved all the way over to here, easy peasy. And one thing to note, assuming it works correctly, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it built pretty nice. Yeah, looks pretty good overall. Now, if you want, you can uh, you can cut and paste a structure. Let's do this. So I'm gonna cut this building. And let's, uh, once it's done cutting there, you'll see the render appear. Let's rotate it just a little bit so that it's facing that way. Keep in mind, you can paste buildings or structures into, into a wall. So for example, if we pop over to here, uh, let's say we want this down a Y level or two. So let's do like that. Does that sound cool? Uh, and make sure that your replace blocks is on so that it can override what's in the wall there and then click. And you'll notice that it's removing all the stone inside the wall and replacing it with hair because that's what was there originally. Pretty cool. And that should about do it for uh, the Mod Spotlight I'm building gadgets too. Uh, you can handle fluids now, you can copy and paste structures, you can cut and paste structures. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do, plus, you know, all the fancy different animations, which, you know, are just kind of my favorite. Uh, had fun doing those. And then interacting and binding with inventories, especially applied and logistics, will, should be really nice. I'll work on a uh, interaction with refined storage as well. Uh, I definitely plan to do that. It's not there yet, but soon I should have a uh, way to bind to refined storage as well as applied and logistics. For now, Dial 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the Mod Spotlight. Take it easy.